look at this luxurious cream and look how smooth it is. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be an interesting one because I'm gonna be showing you how I make my body lotion. <laughs> In formulating this recipe, I wanted to make it both lightweight but moisturizing at the same time without it feeling too heavy. So that's why I decided to include hemp seed oil, which you guys know if you have followed my channel for a while, I love this ingredient. I put it in everything. And I'm also including shea butter. Another special ingredient that I've added to this new formulation is allantoin. And allantoin is one of those ingredients that you don't need a lot of in the recipe to add that amazing punch. And what it does specifically is it's a great ingredient that helps soothe and protect your skin. It's not irritating to the skin. It's very gentle and also packs a huge punch in terms of moisturization. And ever since I've decided to add it to my formulation, I have definitely noticed a difference. Another addition to my lotion recipe is glycerin, and glycerin is definitely known for its moisturizing properties. It's really one of those powerful ingredients that not only adds moisture to the skin, but helps the skin retain its moisture. So that was an ingredient that was definitely lacking in my old recipe. And of course, with making lotion, you cannot actually make lotion without emulsifiers. And in my recipe, I have two, polo wax and stearic acid. I've definitely found that lotion formulations are a lot more stable if you have two emulsifiers working together. And this really helps with preventing separation and keeping your lotion in that creamy, lotion-like consistency that we all love. And the last special ingredient that I have in my lotion is chrysanthemum extract. And the impact an extract has on your skincare products depends actually on whatever particular extract you choose because each extract has a different property. For example, with chrysanthemum, it helps with skin irritation and redness. It's very soothing and acts as an astringent in skincare and that's why I chose that particular extract for my lotion. But I know when it comes to using extracts, not every extract is made the same in terms of concentration. So if you're deciding to use extracts in your skincare, pay attention to the strength and concentration of that particular extract that you're buying from that supplier. In the instance of the extract that I use, it was a strength of 12 to one and that will make a difference as to how much you actually use in your lotion. So now I've talked a lot about the ingredients that I'm using, let me show you the actual method. Now the first step into making any lotion is to disinfect every tool and every surface that you will be using. And the way I do that is I take a big bucket and I make a bleach solution. And it's one parts bleach to 10 parts water. And I dunk all of my equipment into that solution. And then I bring it out of that solution and let it air dry. And once it's dry, then your tools are disinfected and ready to go. And of course, when you're making lotion, always wear gloves, use distilled water, basically give your lotion the best chance in preventing any harmful bacteria from getting into your lotion. So the first step is to combine all of our water phase ingredients. And you want to be using heat resistant glass containers when you are putting your ingredients in there because we are going to be heating these ingredients up in a water bath and you definitely wanna make sure you're using the right tools for the job. So I like to use these heat resistant glass measuring cups. And for the water phase, ingredients. I like to use a larger size that can hold about a liter. You're going to want to give this a stir. And then once all of that allantoin is dissolved, the water will still be cloudy but once everything is dissolved, then you can go ahead and put this into a water bath. So that is good. I'm now going to be combining my emulsifiers and oils and butters in this very large eight cup glass um, bowl or baking bowl, I think is a good term for it. But the reason why I'm going to be putting it into this large bowl is because we're going to be putting the water into here and, I, and you want to use a vessel that's big enough to contain all of that fluid. So this is about 2000 milliliters or eight cups. So the emulsifier that I'm using is Polo Wax. 
and this is a really good reliable emulsifier it is great at keeping your lotion combined and prevents separation so if you're having separation issues look into the type of emulsifier that you're using and i've also learned that with lotions it's best to use a combination of emulsifiers just to make it even more stable so in addition to polo wax i've added stearic acid to my formulation and since i've been doing that the separation has become non-existent i don't experience lotion separation anymore but I could, it could also be attributed to the new process that I've been implementing as well, which you will see in this video. So here's the stearic acid going in. So those are my emulsifiers. I'm now going to be measuring out my oils. And there's only one oil in this recipe, and that's hemp seed oil. I will be adding shea butter at a later time, but I really love hemp seed oil. As you guys know, I built an entire company around this ingredient but it's just one of those amazing ingredients that add such rich moisturization to my products but it doesn't clog pores and it's just amazing i love it i love its green color too but if you don't want to use hemp seed oil you can sub it out for any other light oil and by light oil i mean any fast absorbing oil apricot kernel oil sweet almond oil you could even go luxurious with this lotion and make it jojoba oil. Hemp seed oil is really light and fast absorbing, so sub it out for any other oil that has that same property and you should have similar results. So while I use unrefined hemp seed oil, I use refined shea butter because I find that unrefined hemp seed oil doesn't have a particular smell that I can discern from the finished product, whereas Unrefined shea butter will definitely have a very potent smell that I don't want in my finished product So make sure that you are using unrefined shea butter unless that's something that you want in your product um, But yeah, I do find unrefined hemp seed oil to be pretty okay. I, I don't smell it and other, none of my customers have ever complained about a strong weird hemp seed oil smell so and in terms of subbing out shea butter any soft butter I think would be great. I hear really good things about mango butter. Once you're done measuring everything out, these are our water phase ingredients. These are our oil and emulsifier ingredients or oil phase ingredients. And we are gonna put them on the stove in a water bath and have them heat up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And once they hit that level of heat, we're gonna hold them at that heat for about 20 minutes and then we will move on to the next step from there. And this is what it looks like on the stove. I like to put these aluminum foil caps on top of my beakers in order to prevent water from um, the water bath jumping up into my uh, beakers. We don't want that. So this helps to keep the, um, that water out, but it also helps to keep any evaporating water from escaping too much into the air. And you'll find with um, our other phase, our cool down phase ingredients, that we will be reintroducing any water that has evaporated back into the recipe. And I'll show you how I do that when we get to that step. But right now we're going to let these ingredients melt down and get to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. I have my stove on about medium. And for my stove, it's about an hour until it gets to that point, but it varies from stove to stove. So it's something that you really have to monitor. And once I get to that point, then I will come back on here and show you the next step. So it's been about an hour and my butters, oils, and emulsifiers have all melted down and they have hit that 158 degree Fahrenheit temperature. And I have held them at that temperature for about 20 minutes. And now all that's left to do is to combine the water and the emulsifiers and oils. And I'll be pouring the water into the oils and I will blend it up with my sick butter, and then I will see you when that is all done. So for this initial phase, I blend for about two minutes straight using my sick blender. And now the next step is to let this cool down to below 145 degrees Fahrenheit so that we can add our cool down ingredients. 
So it's getting close. Oh, you are so tilted. So it's getting close to the time where I add in my cool down ingredients and I actually got this in the mail. I had to order another stick blender because my original stick blender, which was awesome by the way, it's an Oster. Let me go real quick. Let me show you what it was. This Oster stick blender, this one was so great because it was all stainless steel and it was really great at not pulling air into whatever it was I was stick blending. So I was using my uh, KitchenAid one in the meantime, and that one was not the greatest. It would suck in air into my soap, into my lotions, and it would make things all foamy and full of bubbles, which is not what you want. So I had to order a new one to replace that awesome Oster one, so I decided to go with Braun. And this is what the bell looks like. I like that it's a stainless steel bell shape, and hopefully this doesn't throw up a ton of air into my whatever it is that I'm sick of letting basically. <laughs> so I'm actually gonna use this now. I'm going to sanitize it and then use it to blend my cool down ingredients into my lotion. So let's do that. So for our cool down ingredients, this is where we bring back some of the water that has evaporated during the warming up of our water phase. And we are also going to incorporate our extract, our um, heat sensitive in, uh, ingredients like our preservative. And then we are going to blast the lotion with the sick blender for another two minutes so that everything becomes incorporated again. So I'm just gonna measure out those ingredients into my measuring cup over here. <laughs> So depending on the type of extract that you use, for example, a liquid versus a powdered extract, you may need to warm up that liquid so that the powder is able to disperse inside of it and be evenly distributed into the water. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be using powdered chrysanthemum extract. And in order to get it fully incorporated, I will need to heat up this distilled water. And usually a blast in my microwave for about 10 seconds does the trick. It heats it up to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And that temperature of water is enough to allow the chrysanthemum extract to fully dilute. And it's not so hot that the preservative breaks down inside of it. I don't think I mentioned this, but another amazing ingredient that I'm adding to my cool down beaker is panthenol. And this adds such a wonderful, luxurious slip and feel to lotion. It's just absolutely wonderful. And this is the same panthenol that I use in my shampoo bars and conditioner bars. I don't know if there's a sub for panthenol, but it's one of those ingredients that you don't have to include in your lotion recipe. But for me, I just love the extra silky feel that it adds to the lotions that I make with it. And so now that that is all in the same beaker, I'm going to use a little mini blender. And you can get these from any kitchen store. And you just go in here and try to break up the clumps This is the chrysanthemum extract fully diluted into the water. So now that that is all incorporated, I'm gonna be adding my Optifin to the same beaker. And one thing to note about using chrysanthemum powdered extract for lotion is that it will tinge the lotion a little bit brown. So that's something to keep in mind if you're not going to be using micas to color your lotion and you're going to leave it as natural um, looking as possible, this will come out a bit of a tan color. So I'm just gonna add it to my lotion base here. And I'm going to take my blender. So at this point, you'll also wanna add in your fragrance oil for my lotions that I'm making today. We will be making our Georgian Bay lotion, so that's what I'm going to be adding to this base right now. And then I'm going to wait a little bit. It's going to sit and I'm going to allow it to solidify over the next hour or so. And then once it starts to actually be 
a lotion type consistency that's very thick and very creamy, that's when I will put it into jars. If you're going to be bottling it using those plastic thin bottles where it's really hard to get the lotion into it once it's solidified, then at this point I would pour the lotion into those bottles. But if you're going to be using jars like me, then wait until it gets a lot thicker. So we're back after about half an hour from when I last saw you guys. And I want to show you the consistency. It is amazing. Let me just switch this around. <laughs> Look at this luxurious cream and look how smooth it is it's pillowy soft and you can see how it's kind of thick so this formula i don't think would work well with a pump bottle um, but a wide mouth jar type of package or um, those squeeze tubes this lotion consistency would be awesome for that and just a little bit more of a close-up so i will be putting these into the jars and i will be showing you how i do that right now so I have my sanitized jars right here. I'm going to put them on the scale so that I know exactly what the amount is inside of each jar. And it's just a matter of getting the lotion into these wide mouth jars. And this might take a little bit of practice, but I have done many jars now at this point, so I'm pretty good at it. But you basically just aim for the top of it and let it go right inside and you'll get these air pockets. And how you get rid of them is just grabbing a towel and lightly tapping the jar down so that it eliminates those air pockets. And you can see that it got rid of them there. So I will continue filling this jar up. And now this recipe will fill about three and a half eight ounce jars. And if you want to scale it up, scale it down, I do provide the percentages in the recipe that I provide on my Patreon so that you can make however amount you like just using the percentages. Let's tap that down even more. And that is what we have right now. Oh my God, look how luxurious that looks. It is fantastic looking, so creamy no separation and from the tests that i've done it is so stable this lotion formula stays lotion for quite some time and that is what you want to look for in a lotion so i will continue filling these jars i have a small version that i want to make of this as well so yeah i'll just keep on doing that and i'll be back in just a minute So here is the final result and as you can see it just looks so thick and luxurious and wonderful and this is the small version the four ounce and I like to offer both sizes because customers really seem to appreciate that that they can get it in either size and the texture is just wonderful let me get a little bit and show you how it applies. This is one of my test jars and you can see that it's super stable, no separation, and the texture of the cream is just so wonderful. If I were to go in here, this is how it looks. It's like whipped cream, pretty much. Mm, it smells good. <laughs> it smells very good. Yeah, it smells amazing and you just put it on your skin like that. And even though that was quite a bit, <laughs> you'll notice that it absorbs very fast into the skin. But at the same time, as you're applying it, it is incredibly silky and smooth and just feels fantastic. So you have amazing deep moisture that applies smoothly like a dream but without the greasy hands afterwards. I love, love, love this lotion. And 
I do want to say that I am also working on face lotions. That is something that I have suddenly become very passionate about is making lotions for your, the face and as well as the body and researching all of the ingredients that it takes to make a face lotion an amazing face lotion that's pH balanced for the skin and provides all the good stuff that the skin on your face needs and loves that's different from your body skin. So keep an eye out for that. And again, if you want the exact recipe, including the percentages, head over to my Patreon, which is linked in the description down below and join the community over there. We already have a small, wonderful community. Thank you again to each and every one of my patrons who have pledged already. Over on there, I will share my recipes, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that I do not share here on YouTube and on my other social media platforms and also sneak peeks as to what I'm working on and little blurbs about the ingredients that I use and why I use them. So if that's something that you're interested in, that is the link that I have down below. And speaking of patrons, I have a tier that you can pledge into which will give you guys the benefit of providing me a link to anywhere you want. And I will have that linked in the description below as well as a shout out in my videos. So these are what I call my bubble BFFs. Thank you so much. Please check them out and also their links to their businesses down below. Kale's gonna join me for my sign off. <laughs> I'm here to sign off. That's all you get of me today. Don't worry, we're gonna have more Kale in future videos, but for today, this is just a cameo. He's working hard in the garden. Is that what you're doing right now? Yep, watering the plants. Okay. Pretty dry, pretty dry. Yeah, we have not had rain in Ontario for a while, so hopefully we get some rain soon. But if you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling. Enjoy the beautiful summer weather that we are getting. Keep making beautiful things. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>